everyone loves getting an epic build lapse of the trail they're building. So today I'm going to show you how to take your time lapses from this to this. Let's go. Okay, let's start with the gear you will be using. There are three options, guys. Number one, it's your mobile phone. Everyone got one. Number two, it's an action camera. And number three, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Cameras, like DSLRs and stuff, they're big, they're chunky, and uh, they're expensive. So you might not feel comfortable taking them out into nature and having them stand in the sun for hours upon hours. Phones are awesome because everyone has one. The problem with phones, on the other hand, is that it's really inconvenient to have your phone mounted to a tripod for hours and you can't use it. Plus, I do think if you do this regularly, it is definitely going to shorten the lifespan of your phone. So I recommend an action camera. Not everyone has one, so if you don't have one, you can still use your phone. But if you do have an action camera, it is way better. Okay, so you've decided on what to use, whether you're gonna use an action camera, a phone, or a DSLR or mirrorless camera. Now you just pop it in time-lapse mode, right? No. For the best results, you really wanna take matters into your own hands. If you just want an okay time-lapse and you're not that bothered about the quality, just pop it in time-lapse mode and it's okay. But if you don't have the newer GoPros, it often ends up looking like this. This is because in time-lapse mode, GoPros don't allow you to change the color profile or the sharpness. Okay then, so how do I do it? Well, so my preferred method is actually just to take a 4K video with the sharpness in medium and the color profile in flat. This isn't a true time-lapse, but people don't care. Then I import it into an editor and I speed it up. I do this personally because for the YouTube videos, it's really nice to also have real-time footage too. And I can't always be doing both. Plus, in my opinion, it is the most convenient way because you just hit record, stop the recording, pop it in a video editor and speed it up to your own liking. So at the end of the day, if you're just recording a video file, there's less room for error because you can mess with it quite a lot. If you don't have a video editor, guys, I recommend you go download DaVinci Resolve. It is completely free and you can use it on Windows and Mac. Now there is one more way. If you go on your GoPro to the time-lapse mode, you will see there's an option for time-lapse photo. Now, you might be asking, what is time-lapse photo because you want a video? Well, this is what's considered a true time-lapse. Every two seconds, your camera takes a photo. At the end of the day, you put all the photos together, slap them in a video editor, and it turns it into one big video file that is super sped up. Now, you can either have the camera take a photo every one second, every two seconds, all the way up to one minute. This is called an interval, and which setting you put it in is gonna determine how fast or how slow your time lapse is. Now, you can even buy remotes for DSLRs and mirrorless cameras to do the exact same thing as on a GoPro. Some of them even have it built in, and you can download apps to do the exact same thing on a phone. Now, why would you wanna do this instead of just taking a video? Long story short, it's way higher quality. My DSLR is old and it can only take 1080p video, but if I use this method, I can get 4K raw time lapses. That's insane. Guys, one minute intervals give you a 10 second video time lapse for five hours of building. That's a lot, which is exactly why I tend to stay with two second intervals. And I never, ever, ever pass the five second mark. Because here's the thing, with the photo method, if you import it into your video editor, you can't make it slower, but you can speed it up. So I would rather have it end up being too slow and speed it up because if it's too fast, you can't recover it. Two second intervals is awesome because 10 minutes of building gets you 10 seconds of footage. Okay, that's enough about the technical stuff. Let's talk tips. First of all, I'm gonna straight up say that my recommendation for most people is to just record video, download the free version of this 
download the free version of DaVinci Resolve or if you're on a Mac you probably have uh, what do they call it or if you're on a Mac you probably have iMovie and then just speed it up it's the most convenient and you get really great results really quickly tip number one get a high angle people love to see the travel come together they're not watching the time-lapse to see people moving up and down swinging tools really fast they're watching the time-lapse to see the trail forming over time and they can't do this if the camera's on the ground guys so put your GoPro in the tree clamp it up there or you can get a cheap tripod which can get it way higher tip number two is be patient guys the end product might just be a couple seconds of footage but the camera has to stand for quite a while don't be tempted to move the camera every 10 minutes guys Am I making any sense? It kind of feels like I'm not making any sense right now. Tip number three to get good build lapses is to pay attention to the lighting, especially if you're in the forest. Forests are so harsh on the cameras. Oftentimes there's really bright spots and really dark spots. The cameras can't handle that. They're either exposed for the bright spots or they're exposed for the dark spots. You gotta decide. That is the end of this video. I hope this is gonna help you guys get dope build lapses. I will see you all next week and subscribe for weekly trail building videos.